Hey friends, so welcome back. So in this video, we are going to talk about system model in the topic of deadlocks. And if you haven't seen my previous video on deadlocks, then please go back and see the previous video on deadlocks so that you can have what the knowledge about what we're going to do in this one. So friends, now let's do system models. This is one of the another topics which is related to deadlock topic and is really important to understand. So, a system consists of finite number of resources to be distributed among a number of completing processes. So, as we talked in the last video that a computer system is having resources. Right? And there are processes. And these processes require resources to complete their operation suppose in a system there are p1 process p2 process and there are r1 resource and r2 resource so p1 and p2 must be requiring these resources to complete their operation and that is what we are saying that a system consists of finite number of resources that these resources are not unlimited right these are limited resources because if the resources were unlimited then there would have been no problem no situation of deadlock because it would have been a limited unlimited process but the resources are limited and we cannot have so many resources to give them to all so now the resources are partitioned into several types each consisting of some number of identical instances so now what then this point means is suppose we have a printer. It is a resource. Right. Now we have instances of printer, which means that if process P1 requests for printer, It is allotted and at the same time P2 requests for printer. Now what happens is if this printer has an option of printing simultaneously two prints then there would have been no problem right but as we know printer cannot print two prints at the same time it first it will be completing one of its order and then it will be switching to the next so what happens is printer is having an instance the first instance is allotted to p1 p1's request is handled by printer it is printed and then the next instance of p2 is done so in the next version the p2 is given the option to print the use the printer and have the resource so next we are having memory space CPU cycle, files and I.O. devices, for example, printers and tape drivers are examples of resource types. So as we talked in our last video that resources, anything that is attached to the computer system or internal components of computer are known as resources. So we are giving some of the examples. One second. Let's just... Have a new page from the starting. Okay, so now examples of computer resources. One CPU cycles. files, I.O. devices. Here the word I.O. means input output devices. These are printer, tape drivers, etc. Right guys? So now 
A process and operating system uses different resources and uses resourcing in a following manner. So friends here what we are saying is that in an operating system you cannot use any resource whenever you wish. There is a proper procedure of how the process is gonna use the system's resources. So these are there are basically three steps in which this process goes on. So let's write it down. A process in operating system uses different resources in the following sequence right okay so the very first point under this comes is request a resource so whenever a process needs a resource, the first step that needs to do is request a resource. Process requests the resource. If resource cannot be granted immediately, then the requesting process must wait until it can acquire the resource. Exactly. So what we are saying here is that whenever a process needs a resource, first of all, it is going to request for it. And if that resource is free at that time, it is allotted to the process as we saw in the previous example of our printer here the p1 process request for printer the printer was available so it was allotted to process p1 and then a p2 process requested for printer but at this time it is already with process p1 and printer is not available as a resource for p2 so what it happens here is the p2 goes into a waiting state and it will be waiting till it receives the p1 is already freed the printer so next point that comes is use use the resource the process can operate on resource for example if resource is printer process can print on it like in previous example the process p1 which has was already allotted the printer now p1 has requested which was a first point and the second point when it got allotted it has to use it in the use the resource our p1 process is using the printer next come the release of the resource now our p1 process is having our printer it is already using it and now once the operation is finished it has finished using it it has to release the process the resource so that another process can come and get the resource in our example when p1 requested first step got it allotted and used it which was our second step now once the operation is completed p1 process will release the printer as a resource so that this resource which is our printer is available for process p2 to get it because p2 already sent a request but is in waiting state because the printer wasn't available so these are the three steps which in which are the sequence that how a process will be using the resources available and how this process goes is in three steps so friends if you liked it and it was useful please give a thumbs up to the video and in the comment section please let me know if i have missed any of the topics or any topic you want me to cover and do subscribe. Thank you.